Hey guys, Breadguard Gaming here. Hope you're having a good day. This video is a guide and showcase on one of my favorite ways to do a Roman Empire world conquest. I start with a superhuman baby who becomes a pirate lord and then Genghis Khan. I'm starting in 867 in either Prandheimer or Upland, Upland being the easier start. For game rules, I have the default, except for Black Death, I'll make it organic. I have a custom superhuman Viking baby for the longest reign possible. I prefer a male since I can have kids at any age. I take Eccentric for 20% monthly lifestyle experience. Although there's 50% stress gain, I have the reclusive stress trait to help out. Reclusive and disloyal are also point refunds. I get Herculean, Comely, Quick, and Pureblooded for genetics, Fecund for five years of life, and Witch for OP Witch Covens. I've set all the base skill points to zero, full point breakdown here. Before starting, I have a few things to do. I could first come here to take the Strength and Bloodline decision to improve genetics and health. Then I will educate myself for the learning education and get a guardian who's best at learning. When starting in Upland, I can create a duchy title immediately for prestige and legitimacy. Then I will spend this prestige to increase Huskerals or create them if they are not available and also station my troops. If I have leftover prestige, I would invite champions. If not, I'll turn on the notifications as they are strong early game. I will go and employ a wet nurse to reduce illnesses and development events. I will go to decisions and determine a personal deity. I'm gonna go for Uller to get some martial. I go to activities and turn on notifications for meet peers. I wanna attend this for prestige and potential skills. Then I'll go to my council and make sure my spy master is not crazy. His his AI is content villain and being a villain he's very cruel so I might prefer my wet nurse who's not as crazy. Here are some traits in AI to avoid or seek out. I'll come over to Jorvik and try to arrange a marriage with Saga. If I can't then I will just go and marry myself to the strongest person I can. For now it's this chieftain. This is to gain an ally to reduce being attacked. My first overarching goal is to get to level 6 fame, which is 24,000 total fame XP. This will let me take this powerful decision that gives 7,500 special inheritable troops. These troops are the backbone of sustaining a big empire, so I will not use them unless the situation is dire. In the early game, the fastest way to gain prestige is to create multiple duchy titles. For 125 gold, we get 300 prestige, so my plan is to conquer the bare minimum, like two counties for this one. Some other good early targets include Visby, which you only need that one, Norland, since we already own one, and these western duchies, since a lot of these rulers are only counts, and also the northern islands over here. To get gold for creating these titles, we want to raid frequently, which is the first thing I'm going to do right now. I'm going to raise everyone as a raider. Some great spots are Canterbury here and also Gloucester over here. Everywhere else will only be single or low double digit. Just be careful if the ruler is stronger than you, but early game Wessex is busy at war, so I can pretty safely take Canterbury. Once I've gotten that gold, I can either go right back home or some other places that are nice are Brittany, which is usually not super strong, Leon, Cornwall, and the rulers here in Wales. I'm going to go for this ruler here. When raiding, I tend to focus on the capitals. If the realm is a little bigger, like this duke here, I like to raid for the ruler's capital, but also the capitals of their vassals, which is highlighted by these little flags. And you can see the line connecting them. So I'm going to skip over this one and go for this guy's capital and come back down to this guy's capital here. He actually raised his troops to fight us, but he lost. And raiding is also a good source of battles, which is the next best way to gain prestige. And if we fight against a hostile faith, like this guy's Catholic, then we also gain piety. And other than collecting the gold from the holdings, the other main source of gold is actually from capturing prisoners. If we check our ransom here, we'll see that this new prisoner is actually worth up to 100 gold, which I can wait for him to earn. I can ransom this guy here for now. Now I need to return my raiders back home. I also have enough prestige to invite champions. So they come back with the gold and the prestige. Now I can create another duchy title. I can also come in to increase my Huskerals and I can actually create a second regiment of them. I'm gonna want 1,000 Huskerals and 1,000 veterans. Next, I'll go for Visby over here and wars against the same faith cost piety and if I ever run out of piety I can go on raids to these Catholic lands again and battles are also a good source of fame you see we've earned 
almost 200 fame from those battles alone. Although it, it's not prestige, but only experience, we've leveled up. Once I capture this holding, I also get the loot, and now I can enforce my demand. Because I have enough gold, I can create that duchy title and get even more prestige. Just don't create any kingdom titles, otherwise we won't be able to take the Elevate Kingdom of Man decision. For lands that I capture over my limit, I can also grant it to a person with the highest prowess. This guy here actually is a guest from the Recruit Knight decision. I can either recruit him for a little bit of gold, or I can grant him this title, which is free. Also, since level 6 fame takes such a long time, I have a few small goals. The first one is to do the Forge the Yams Viking decision, which also gives me a 1500 inheritable special troops. One of the requirements is I need to have a county along the southern and eastern Baltic coast. If I click that, it will actually highlight it in white of which counties are eligible. So I just conquer one land of whomever is the weakest, like this guy over here. Another trick you can do as well is we got a notification saying we caught his daughter. If we check our war score here, by just holding that county, we have 91% and we have 50% from the battle. If I enforce my demand now, I will release that daughter. So before I do so, I can actually ransom her for some gold. And after I got the gold, I can still enforce my demand. If I can, I can even try to take a hostage. That way I will earn some prestige. When it's an orange colored army like that, it means it's a hostile army, but not a direct enemy. And if we win the battle against them, we'll actually gain actual prestige and not just fame XP. So in wars and on raids, if you see an enemy that's orange, you can try to take them out. In a case like this where I actually capture the war leader, he only owns one county, but he has gold. And if I ransom him, I'll get a good amount. And after he's released, I'll still be at 100% war score and I can actually take his lands from him as well. And don't forget to intend meet peers when you get the notification. This gives events for extra skills or sources of prestige. And sometimes you'll get an artifact. This one is pretty useful, but most times they are not. And I would recommend you destroy them to get the gold. Sometimes the peasants can also be a good source of a knight, so you can recruit them for free. If I can get to max legitimacy, it's nice to get the renown. That way I can take the sea wolves perk, which will double the prestige and fame gained, but I'll eventually get that in a couple of years. One way to gain a lot of legitimacy is to declare war against someone higher ranking, and if we win that war, then we'll get 100 legitimacy. So there he is. I would love to fight him, and it looks like he's coming for us. But with this small of a difference, he's underestimating how strong the Viking men at arms are and you see we just destroy him easily and that's going to give a good amount of fame and devotion. We earn even more for when we are numerically outnumbered and now we got some more legitimacy and some fame. When I have a few hundred gold I will actually start a fabrication for any county in Denmark which I'll use later and once I have over a thousand men at arms I can start raising a smaller army to fight those outnumbered battles so I can click raise men at arms here and this army can probably handle an enemy army of 2500 so like france might be a pretty good target right now if i grab my men here one of my favorite spots to land for france is this temple right here sometimes he won't raise his army so we'll just raid up river avoiding the castles he actually never came because he just started fighting a war so i'll just raid paris and then go back home this was my first big defensive war but i'm not too worried because i have a lot of gold i can always summon mercenaries and i also need all these wars for the prestige and fame and here's an example of where we're outnumbered, but we were able to defeat them, which gave us a huge amount of fame. So we're almost exalted among men, and we're not even an adult yet. If the war is taking a long time, I can always white piece it. Or in this case, I think I should win soon, so I can always go for the finish. And we won easily. I'm going to take a hostage and get some more legitimacy and prestige, so thank you. Once I become an adult, although I have to marry this lady here, I usually am strong enough that I don't need that alliance anymore. So as long as I have the piety, I'm going to meet immediately divorce her and instead I'm going to find someone with inheritable traits. I'm going to look for someone with a level 3 trait which this girl actually has a level 3 and she's a noblewoman which is nice. If she wasn't a noblewoman it's still worth it to marry level 3 lowborn even though I lose legitimacy because genetics is way more important in my opinion or if there's no good level 3 lowborn I'll go for the best highborn with a trait but in this case I'm lucky so I'll just go for this girl. For my lifestyle I'm going to go for theology focus 
for the piety. Then I'm going to go down for wash my hands to reduce the chance of death. Then sanction loopholes so I can buy some claims. And then profit so I can reform my faith. And also when we become an adult, make sure we go for onager. Sometimes you'll be able to get this, sometimes not. I'm going to appoint a court physician. If they're not good, I'm going to search for one. And one of the decisions I can start taking as an adult is to raise the runestone, which costs a little bit of gold, but gives a lot of good resources. So I'm going to always want to do this one. And it doesn't matter where I put it. For my regent, I don't bother swinging the scales of power. And I just attempt discharge instead. Even if I fail this discharge, the scale of power will be decreased. So if I try this guy, although I failed, you see the scale of power has decreased. So after one year, I can try again. And eventually I can get rid of him for free. So I still need about 14,000 fame to become a legendary figure. So my next small goal is to max out my men at arms. The advantage of being higher level fame now is I can actually declare war to conquer the duchy. In between wars, I'm also going to spam pilgrimages and hunts and make sure that the activity is safe like this. Just remember to start this pilgrimage first. Otherwise, being at an activity will prevent you from declaring war. And once you have the physician, I'll actually pay him to do advanced research so I gain more lifestyle experience. Or if I get a plague, I will switch to control plagues. Now when I go raiding, I'm going to actually lead the army myself until I can get this event to get the Viking trait, which is required for the Kingdom of Man decision. If a battle is about to happen, I would just change to a stronger commander and then change back once the battle is over. If I get a plague in my capital, then I want to isolate my capital, which will increase the resistance, and I also want to enter seclusion, which will reduce infection. France might be ready for me, so I'll try again. Let me land here. So he finally came out of hiding, and now I can change to a stronger commander, and I'll wait right here. And he made a severe miscalculation. Again, our men-at-arms are just that much stronger. And if I have enough gold, instead of raiding more, I can click off the raid and I can try to chase him as soon as this raid is done. So we chased him, but he's actually coming back for us. But this time we should be able to have a high chance to destroy him. And so from those two battles, we gained a lot of prestige and piety. And I'm going to continue chasing him down. And he's right there. So let's try to kill him. And so I completely stack wiped him, which gave me a lot of prestige and piety. And I finally have enough to forge the Yams Vikings, which I'll do. So if I come over to my military tab, you'll see I have these 1500 special troops. And they will be inherited on succession, which again, I'm only going to use these in an emergency. Also, so when you're raiding, try not to enter places with the plague because if we just raid in here, there's still a chance that we will get this disease, although it's very low. Once I have my 2,000 men at arms, I'm ready to go on a Varangian adventure. This is a special cast's belly that requires me to be an adult, and the target realm needs to be a different culture. So I can go for a Varangian adventure against this guy right here. I usually target Alba or Ulster. The key thing is I want them to be a tribal realm, since if I target a feudal realm, I'll actually change governments and I want to stay tribal. So let's come back, go on an adventure. I'm going to grab this chiefdom here. You'll see I'll actually give up all the lands I currently have and I'll gain some gold. I'll gain the strong adventurer trait and if I hover over this button, I get a stack of 2,000 special soldiers as long as I control 10 plus Scandinavian counties scaling with this chart. So once they declare war, those special troops will spawn right in my capital. If we check the military page, they're also going to appear down here and you can see they'll be inherited on success. Session. This second part is confusing, but as long as we win, then they will become permanent. Again, we don't want to use them, so I'm only going to use my reinforceable men. Clicking all also summons those volunteers, which if you did by accident, there's a button to split off special soldiers. And you see the 1500 volunteers here. I'm just going to use this replenishable army to go to war. If I want to be safe, I could even disband these armies. All right, and we were able to win. So I'm going to get a hostage. When I enforce my demands, you'll see that I have a lot of time titles lost because all these lands will now be given to someone random and my actual realm would become this small area here. My military strength went down a little bit and half of my strength right now is my special soldiers which I'm not going to use. I'm still aiming for legendary figure but now my goal is to get over here to Mongolia. So my first action is I'm going to go to war for that claim I had although let me first return this hostage and now I can go to war against him so I'll grab the claim here. I need a little prestige so I'm going to just 
raid a little bit. Once he's getting close to me, I'm going to change to another commander so I don't get hurt. Unless I'm the best one, then I'll just leave as is. And although you might think we're going to lose, we've proven again the strength of the Vikings. So let's actually chase them. And I wouldn't even mind losing the gold. I'm really here just for all this juicy prestige. Now that I have enough, I'm going to return home. And this is the event that I'm waiting for. I finally raided enough that I got the Viking trait. And now I can have someone else lead. So now I'm going to declare war on Denmark. It might be a little tough. So let me replenish my troops. I'll just go on a hunt in the meantime. I'm going to maximize for prestige. I don't need to pay for extra chance. The person I'm betrothed to is no more. So I'm going to have to find a new wife. So same thing. Someone who is level three, preferably. We have a genius girl here. But instead of wasting more time, let me just go with this lowborn girl. And once married, I'm going to start a seduction scheme ASAP to get the most babies. I'm also going to put her on patronage unless I need some other skills. So now I can comfortably war for Denmark. If I think I need more men, I can always hire mercenaries. Maybe I'll just get one band. Instead of landing right there because he's probably there, I'm going to land over here where it might be a little safer and take over this spot. There he is. I was unlucky and I already failed the seduction, so I can't try again until later. And we got our first legacy perk. So now I can go for the sea wolves, which will double the fame. And we're halfway there. Anytime we get a child, we're going to educate them so that they can become a witch. And I'll also will train them all in stewardship. So we won that war, we'll get a hostage. Now I can claim for a county as far east as I can. I prefer claiming the capitals of these realms to make conquering a little faster. It's going to take 22 months. So in between, I'm going to first conquer a holy site if I don't have one already. I see Jorvik is kind of weak, so I'm just going to conquer North Riding. Instead of ransoming him and prolonging the war, I'm just going to end it early. Now that I have a holy site, if I pass a little time, I get this custodian of the holy site legend, which I'm going to start. And I want at least a level two. That way I can use the evangelize to the realm decision. We'll see why later, why it's good. I'm going to have a chronicler who's first going to extol domestic legend and then commend it abroad. There's still a few months left, so I'm going to take over the Isle of Man. Now with the Isle of Man, if I check the elevate kingdom of man decision, all I need is to have legendary figure. Now I can go to war for my claim. All right, we got that. Now I will continue fabricating. It looks like I go for perm. And now that I have the counties I need up here, I'm going to conquer my way south to get into range of the Byzantine Empire, which I kind of am already. So I'll actually try to grab a county with the Greek culture, which one of these two looks pretty good. These guys are still too far away. Let's see how far I can go. So I could probably attack the King of Navarra. Since he's at war with multiple people, I'll actually land off to the side so I can see what's going on first before heading over. And now now I can declare war for this guy. And once I get this county, I might be in range of the Abbasids. Still not yet, so let me get something a little closer, like this guy. It's also been enough time. I can try to seduce my wife again. All right, now I'm in range. I also got the claim on Perm, so let me attack for it. I'm also a legendary figure, finally, and I can take this decision, but I'm gonna actually wait. All right, I got Perm. So for my final claim, if the Empire of Mongolia or Kyrgyz exists, I will go for a claim that is just bordering their borders. Otherwise, I'll go for a county with the Buryat culture. So I might have to go as far as over here. In this run, Mongolia exists. While I'm waiting for this last one to happen, with all that piety, I'm going to be able to buy a claim on the Byzantine Empire for 2,000 piety. And I also need about 4,000 to reform my faith. So I have some extra. So I can buy the Abbasid claim as well. I have some time until my next claim. So I think I can also buy the Khazaria Empire claim. And I'll go back to raiding with just my men at arms and going on pilgrimages. But this this time I can go for this Reaver guy. And again, France's army can't compete with our men at arms. In that last battle here, we wiped them. So we gained a massive 1000 prestige. When I get the notice that I've succeeded my seduction, I pick this second choice to just lay with her instead of being a lover. This way I can repeatedly try to make kids with her. And I got this last claim. So let's go fight for Tara. So now I'm bordering the empire of Mongolia. Because I'm tribal, I can actually subjugate them and take over their entire realm. However, I don't want to start this until I'm level 6 fame which I am right now, and I have at least 3,000 prestige, which I also have, and the final realm size is going to be 99. For Mongolia, it's 111 right now. For myself, I have 17. If the numbers don't add up to 99, I'll just conquer some counties near me to make up the difference. Now, I'm finally ready to start one at the last Viking Wars. It looks like he died, 
so I'm just gonna have to restart the war against his heir. When my children turn 15, I'll get an event to convert them to witches, but only if I'm educating them. So that's why it's important to always be educating your children. I got a notice to upgrade my legend. So I'm going to do that. Now if I complete it, I can evangelize. But I'm going to save this for later. Once I have whole of body and profit and sanction loopholes, I'm going to switch to intimidation focus. And eventually I want mortal adoration and prepare for anything, which would help me survive assassins. And right before I enforce my demands, I'm going to elevate the kingdom of man and the isles. So this will make me the lord of blood and gold. I'll gain a lot of renown. And I'll also gain this massive 7,500 special special inheritable troops. I'm going to spend my renown on wanderlust and however many pillage perks I can. The reason why I delayed this decision is because my government changed to feudal, which means my armies now cost gold instead of prestige, which I want to save my gold as a safety buffer. Now I can enforce my demands. It looks like he was being attacked by someone else, so I'll try to white piece or win this. In my royal court, I can now hang a lot of my artifacts, and for the extra artifacts I'm not using, I can destroy them for gold. And instead of wasting more time, I'm going to just white piece this. So now that I'm the new emperor, I'm going to conquer a nearby bird yacht county so let's conquer this county over here real quick it's going to take a few months so to help speed it up let's see if i can call my holy order which I can. So once I've gotten this county, I'm going to make it my capital. Then I'll go to the decisions, scroll down, and I'm going to convert to the local Buryat culture. The Buryat culture is nice because it lets me become Genghis Khan. And also it's one of the only ones with mystical ancestors, which gains renown for granting titles to house members. Now I'm going to grant an extra son all of my titles. To grant quickly, I can hold the control button and left mouse button on the top title. So I'm going to give him all of these titles. You'll see we get a massive amount of renown here. And now that my only title is one tribe, I can embrace tribalism and convert back to tribalism. And now you can see I can become greatest of cons. Before I continue, if the Kyrgyz Empire doesn't exist or Mongolia doesn't exist, then again, I want the last claim to be in a Buryat county. And instead of fighting for the Kyrgyz Empire, I will just conquer the Byzantine Empire. In either scenario, the stage is set and I will call the Great Kurotai and I will gain this greatest of cons trait and I'll be able to use the strongest Cassus Bella in the game, and I'll control the strongest army in the world, which we can view over down here. This army has extremely powerful horse archers and also access to trebuchets, making sieges take only days. Now I'm going to go for the Roman Empire with this conquest priority list. The Byzantine Empire first, and having a claim makes it faster so I can claim the whole thing. I would not have been able to press my claim if my ruler was disfigured, including being one-eyed, because Greek culture has has this tradition that prevents disfigured rulers from pressing claims. Next, we're going to go for the Roman Empire pieces, which are these duchies corresponding to this map. Then the lands of Italia to dismantle the papacy. Then I personally like to get the empires of Persia and the three Indian empires here. And then as many complete empire titles as I can before I die. So this is going to be a lot of conquering to do, which is why we need as much time as we can get. I usually take 50 to 60 years, which in this case, it was perfectly 50. And I can comfortably live up to 100 but if it took you a while to get to mongolia you can just wait for your son to inherit the empire and for him to become genghis khan i would just raid until i die to stack a lot of gold for my heir so just to show you how strong this mongol invasion is for the kingdom of denmark here if i declare war and mongol invade the kingdom of denmark it will show me all the de jure areas that i can conquer a pro tip is you want to target the title that he actually controls which is Denmark. So I'm gonna set my rally as close to his capital as possible, which in my case is over here. And I can summon the Mongol horde immediately over here. I can even disband them immediately, despite this two year penalty. I could raise them immediately. So this horde can literally teleport anywhere I need them to. They also use zero supply, so I can raise this army anywhere I want to. Just make sure that I don't recklessly walk and cause attrition, because that will lose a lot of these special men. And these guys will not reinforce. So let's work my way over to his capital and you'll see it's only going to take like three days for this siege to end. There's his army. If I see the enemy army, I'll try to chase, but I won't chase him if it's going to cost me attrition because this way I can get an easy 50% war score. So we kill them. Looks like that was his small army. Never mind. So he's back over here. Let's chase him to destroy him. I'll get into the water so I can get directly to his 
capital. So I was able to defeat him. If I enforce my demand, I basically took his entire realm. And if we zoom in, I personally control all the de jure titles of Denmark. And most times I will vassalize his other vassals. So this is how you can paint the map really, really quickly. And every time I win everything like this, I'm going to go back to my second son. He's going to be my super vassal and I'm going to grant him everything possible. So I'm going to just click on Denmark to give him everything like that. I do want to keep all the kingdom titles for myself. So I just click off of that and these titles I can give to him once they're not occupied. So we can see the peasants are over here and instead of spending days to come over here, I can actually try to disband them. I'm going to move over to this tile over here and now I can actually disband this army and on this rally point, I can summon them back immediately and have them come over here, saving a lot of time. So remember to use their teleporting feature. And so we won that war and now this is another war over here. I could just teleport this army again and now they're all here to show them pain. Now for some more setup as Genghis Khan. For a stable realm, we want everyone to be our faith. And first I'm going to reform a Satru. I need at least three holy sites. I have North Riding here and I'm going to get two more to also prevent others from making kingdom titles. Make sure I create them first. As Genghis Khan, we will face many assassins. So to best prepare for this future, I'm going to go for prepared for anything in Court of Shadows. I'm going to have Mortar Adoration so my lovers can save me. I'm going to go for making a killing, then for Architected Ancestry, then Graceful Aging, then Home Estates, and maybe assertive rulers. By then I'll probably die and then I'll finish all the others later. For my council, I'm going to put my chancellor on domestic affairs. Let's make sure he's also a strongest vassal. I'm going to put my steward to promote cultural acceptance into that Greek county. And once the acceptance is 40%, I'm going to form a hybrid culture. Let's swap him because it's a little higher. I want my spy master to always be on disrupt schemes. I want him to be someone who's going to be loyal to me. He's a ravener, meaning he is is very dishonorable and I see this guy here is a little bit more compassionate so I'm gonna change for him make sure he converts for more opinion I'm gonna change my marshal to manage royal guards I can't do that right now so let me change my grandeur settings I'm gonna get lodgings and servants and eventually I'll get to level three and I can use this to reduce murder chance as well for court positions I always want a court physician and I want to make sure he likes me so let's get him to our religion again I'm gonna go for advanced research or plagues if needed. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to get a food taster. We're going to go for this guy because he likes us and he's not crazy. I'm also going to get a cupbearer. Someone here, he's a forgiving gentleman. So let's get him. We're also going to go for some bodyguards. We have my son and heir, which I don't want him to be in danger. So let's go for half Dan. We have Bercy here, which I can do. We're going to be capturing a lot of prisoners and I personally will manually ransom the ones that are worth a decent amount of gold. Everyone else, I'm going to just leave alone or before I'm reformed, I can actually execute them all and I'll gain a lot of piety. And if I had any rivals, I want to get rid of them ASAP, either by murdering them or taking over their realm. As long as they aren't a ruler, they can't start a scheme against me. We don't have to worry about factions because everyone's just too weak compared to us. The only ones that do happen are peasant factions, and I'll show an example later. Now that I've conquered all the titles there, let me create the Norway kingdom title. I'm going to grant all of those titles to my son, except for the kingdom title. I'll give him upland as well. Another note is I can also give him all the vassals that dislike me. Like these guys here, I can just give it to him. And this way I can just prevent having people that will actually try to join schemes against me. Once I'm ready here, I'm going to go and reform the faith. I like to have equal, righteous, unrestricted marriage, polygamy, virtuous, witchcraft, dynastic is criminal and control. Everything else I usually leave alone. For the tenants here, I really like medicant preachers. You can keep warmonger and go for astrology, but personally I'm going to change it into pursuit of power for the reduced tyranny gain. And then I'll change this one actually to pacifism for the plus one domain limit. You can pick whatever you like. These are just my personal preferences. And once I've reformed that faith, I'm now ready to continue my conquests. So first I'm going to go for the Byzantine Empire. All right, we got the 
Empire. And now I can reclaim Constantinople as my capital. All right, so next I'm going to try to dismantle the papacy, which if I click here, it will highlight the region of land I need to conquer. There's a lot of small pieces here. Instead of doing it one by one, I usually declare multiple wars. Once I have enough wars here, I'll actually go on hunts and pilgrimages. And this is so I can level up the trait and gain more health to live longer. Later on, I can also use grand tournaments, grand tours, and feasts to get health buffs. I have a full separate video on living longer if you need to see it. With those wars won, let's give everything to my son, which gives us more renown. And now we finally have making a killing, meaning we earn a lot of gold from fighting battles. Make sure we create the titles. And I'll go for the rest of Italia. And thanks to the making a killing, when we fight these big battles, we're gaining a lot of gold. So we're getting paid to do a world conquest. So now I got my first lover here, and now she's going to protect me. I'm going to make this girl my lover as well. All right, now that I have all of that, let me grant those titles again to my son. Let's quick grant these. Now in the kingdom of Italy, I do want Siena. Here's a full list of things I want. I want Byzantium for my capital, so my children get the born in the purple trait. Rome for flavor since we're the Roman Empire. I want these four special universities since they give a lot of amazing stats. I like the Palace of Asian for the minus 20% tyranny gain. I like Baghdad for House of Wisdom with its amazing stats. And I round out my holdings with the four wealthiest mines to provide an insane amount of gold. For Verd Bosna, by default, the capital is in its namesake holding. However, the mine is located in Srebrenica over here, and I can change the county capital there, and then that way I don't have to hold on to this to save myself a holding. And that's my specialized holdings for my favorite combo of personal domains. And now I'm gonna go for the rest, including the Pope on this round. This guy we already went to war with, so let's try to murder him so I can skip the truce by fighting his heir. Let's give everything here to my son again. I'm gonna keep Rome for myself. While I am waiting for this guy to be offed, I'm gonna press my claims on the Abbasid and Khazari empires before they fall. He has a big army, which means a lot of gold, so let's go take him out. We absolutely demolished his armies, gaining a lot of gold, and we also took the empire from him. And sometimes the title I want can be held by a vassal, so I'll fabricate a claim and then revoke the title. After war, I may inherit vassals that can force their way onto my council. So first I want to click on them and modify their contract. I don't want them to have council rights. I can just give them war declaration. I don't want religious rights because I want them to be my religion later. This guy's obligations are already changed, so he's now going to be a target for me to replace him. And once I have enough members of my house as witches, I can now found a witch coven, which will give us some disease resistance, and I can hold some grand rights. And I finally got the last county, so now I can dismantle the papacy, and I'll gain a holy seed and also prevent any crusades. This guy actually rebelled against me, and when I won the war, I'm able to just revoke all those titles from him. And that's how I got Baghdad back. We contracted our first disease, which is measles, and this gives a critical health penalty but thanks to my high level of health and also the witch coven the iron constitution and the artifacts we are still in excellent health and it really doesn't do anything however normally i still recommend doing this do no more than necessary option unless you have the mystical treatment if your physician is an excellent one which mine is but since i'm going to survive it i'm just going to do no more than necessary this will give me a huge boost unfortunately some of my heirs died but i was able to become immune to me and right after I got smallpox so now I'm at fine and now I'm also immune to smallpox once I finished schemer and I got enticing opportunity I'm gonna swap over to family focus and I'm gonna go for a groom to rule and true ruler our culture acceptance with Greek culture is also 40% so I'm gonna form a hybrid culture between spiritual and bureaucratic. I'm gonna go for the latter Byzantine heritage we need to pick Mongolic language for traditions I'm going to keep mystical ancestors because it's just that good, in my opinion. I like Byzantine traditions. I like Eastern Roman legacy and horse lords and legalistic for the vassal limit. For aesthetics, it's up to you. And this will automatically put me into early medieval era. Although I can't access these technologies, I can already start researching royal prerogative and this will be finished in 15 years which is really good eventually i'm gonna hybrid with italian to get republic 
Republican legacy and maybe water rituals. Now instead of cultural acceptance, I'm going to change to promote culture. I'm going to focus on the counties that I do control. So I'm going to promote the culture here. In between, I will also use my guy to convert my personally held domains. I also raided this really good black boar hide that gave plus one domain limit. Books like these also give medium health boost. I just got a new son. Since I have the Byzantine traditions, he was born with born in the purple and now he's my primary heir. So this is the first daughter that is pure blooded that I can marry. So I'm going to marry her and then I'm going to start the endless seduction for maximum heirs. All right. So basically I got all of Persia and almost all of India. Now I'm going to work on Europe. I'm only 79, so I still have a good amount of time. By the way, I would love your feedback on my editing. So comment down below of how I can make the flow better for you. My first superhuman son with this pure blooded daughter. So he's pure blooded and he's got some good traits. So this is my first rebellion. Deal with these. I'm going to want to target this leader as soon as possible. And this guy might be in this stack right over here. I'm currently in another war, but I need to act fast. I have my holy order I can do here. I'll also summon some mercenaries as these guys can also teleport. So I didn't wipe it instantly. And if I click here, he's down over there now. So I'm going to stand those mercenaries away. I'm going to try to teleport them over here. So if I scroll down, I can raise these mercenaries to teleport them. They're going to take out those guys. This holy order here is going to just help take out some of these. Meanwhile, I'm going to try to finish this war as well. So unfortunately, we didn't capture him. Let's see if he teleported. So if it's bringing you to nowhere in particular, it's a little glitched right now. He may or may not become the leader of another stack of armies you're just gonna have to wait in the meantime we're gonna take out as many peasants as we can we also have some of our vassals automatically help us you'll see we have a bunch of allies all right that war is done so i'm also gonna bring over my horde so i'm gonna look for the ones that are under siege people that are moving i won't prioritize so i could probably bring one stack of mongol troops here i need another stack over here take out these two and then my last stack send them over here and have them take over that if those guys have taken out i could teleport these guys somewhere else there's a stack over here i can put them to when i'm at 30 percent, i can just white piece it to delay it for another five years or i can try to go for the win to delay it for another 10 years to save my own time i think five years is enough so i'll white piece it also we do get gold for killing those peasants after conquering for 13 more years my mongo horde became really small so for the rest of my life i'm gonna just slowly conquer these by abduction and when the abduction is ready, we can declare a Mongol invasion for their kingdom and then we can immediately abduct them. And most of the time it's going to work. And now we've instantly won that war without needing to actually fight the war. I especially like this technique for the middle part of Africa because it's really hard to travel here and wars take forever. Now that I've conquered a lot, I'm finally ready to make use of my holy legend. I'm also going to immediately start another one. I'll dedicate it to my daughter. If we look at the map for religion, maybe a third or half of the world is Asatru. But when I take the evangelize to the realm decision, you'll see a huge chunk has converted. And I'm going to repeat this as many times as I can. Evangelized pacifism also makes it so my neighbors might convert, meaning I can vassalize them. So once I do that, now I have 23 neighbors I can vassalize. I'm also not fighting in more wars because I have this huge offensive war opinion, which will take 25 years to go away, meaning I probably won't outlive it. In 974, at 100 seven years old and the horde becoming ever smaller, I decided to start the cleanup process. So first I'm going to increase to absolute tribal authority. Then I'm going to adopt the feudal ways. Now I'm going to make the Byzantine Empire my primary title. And now I'm going to destroy the Mongol Empire title. This will actually give us primogeniture inheritance, but we do lose the Mongol invasion Cassus Belli, but we're done conquering anyways. Next we will consecrate our bloodline. Then I'm going to convert to Zoroastrian faith like this one here. This way I I can become the Saoxiant for this dynasty trait. Then I'll make the Benko Empire my primary title, and I'll make the county of Laxmanavati my capital, and now I'll convert to a Hindu faith so I can become Chakravarti, and finally convert back to Asatru and reclaim Constantinople, and thanks to the new holy legend, I'll be able to immediately convert most of my realm back to Asatru. And the last thing to do is convert my vassals to my religion. This can take a lot of time manually, so the only mod I use is the Demand Mass Conversion mod, 
It still involves a lot of clicking though. I did another decade of conquering by abducting and pressing someone's claim, and then I got the notification I was going to die. Now because I know I'm gonna die, I'm now finally ready to restore the Roman Empire. So the first effect is the Roman Empire will be restored and acquired the jure of all currently held empires. So that's why I wanna try to hold as many empires as I can. So it's okay if I don't conquer everything, I just need enough to create the titles. And I'll also gain the Augustus trait, which gives a decent amount of opinion. So now we've restored the Roman Empire. And if we check the de jure, here's the kingdoms and here's the empire. The entire world is basically de jure Roman Empire. A few more cleanup steps. So I have this guy as my heir, who's decent, but I actually want his younger brother to become the next emperor. Looks like he's being targeted for a murder. So one thing I could do, since I can't disinherit this primary heir, I'm going to actually put him as my priest. And it says I'm blocked. Well, then I'll just imprison you. I lose some devotion, but I'm at the end of my life, so I don't really care. Now that he's imprisoned, let's see. All right, cool. Now I can put my heir. So once I put my heir onto the chaplain position, he is now removed from succession. So instead, my new heir is going to turn into the son that I want to play. So that's one easy trick you can do. I'm also going to demand conversion of everyone I can. This is going to be a lot of clicking again. I'm also going to reset my perks. And the main perk to reuse is groom to rule. That way everyone gets some more skills. And also because your heir inherits some of the positive and negative opinion of your vassals, I'm actually going to grant my heir all of my kingdom titles to earn some more renown. He's going to inherit them anyways. I'll give him Byzantian just so he can be a ruler. I'll hold on to everything else for now. So if I give him all these titles, I'll get a huge amount of renown. He'll also get a bunch of the vassals. And then I'll also grant him the rest of my vassals as well, especially the ones that dislike me. That way, he does not inherit a negative opinion. All right, now that I've granted every vassal to him, he has all of his future vassals. Let me go to my courtiers. And the prisoners, I'm going to just ransom everyone I can. Was ransomed. I can leave everyone else alone here. Or if you want, you can execute them all. We'll go along the theme of Genghis. Khan. So after ruling for 127 years, I'm ready to pass the Roman Empire onto my heir. We fought in 250 wars. Now I'll show you how I make every heir stable. Let's check our powerful vassals. So thanks to our genetics and traits, so we get a lot of opinion. So let me hold off for a second on that. Let's check the factions. So it's not going to update until I pass a little time. So let me just get to January 1st. Let's see which one is strong enough. You see it's populists that are strong. So because this is just a peasant faction, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let's just put on our powerful vassals here. Let me make sure my spy master is not a problem child. So instead of putting any of these guys, I'm going to just go for my half sister. My wife is decent in stats. I could change court politics if I need more opinion, which I'll just do that. I'm going to set up the similar court protections as Genghis Khan. I want a food taster. I want at least one bodyguard. That should be pretty Pretty good for now. Let's see if I have any rivals. I do have one rival here, so let's try to get rid of her. I can't really get rid of her. It seems like I've tried before. Let's pick a lifestyle. So actually my guy already finished architect, which is what I would have done anyways. So for the rest, I'm going to go into the learning and I'm going to go for a scholarship for the development. I'm going to grab scientific and then finish off whole of body. I'm also getting this icon, which tells me I'm 41 vassals above the limit. So I'm going to have to either grant out more kingdom titles to consolidate my vassals or continue kicking the can down the road by adding to this super vassal I already have. I found a ring with vassal limit so we'll equip that. I could probably also get a regalia and a better crown which I'll work on from sponsorship. So now we're only 31 over the limit. What I can do is I'm going to go grant my super vassal a few more kingdom titles and I'll grant her ones that give her vassals. So if I give her these kingdoms, I will gain the renown and also transfer a ton of vassals to her. Before I had 95% reduction and now my income has jumped back to being much higher. Let's see if that also affects the faction. You see the power jumped down by a lot thanks to us gaining a lot of levies and therefore military power. So I might not experience any factions at all. I still have all the special soldiers and I also still have all of my men at arms with the super husk rolls, which I can increase. I can also use activities to gain opinion with my vassals. So like feasts for courtly vassals, hunts for glory hounds, and indirectly pilgrimages for my zealot vassals. And another tip to get opinion is you can also construct cities or temples in your empty holdings. A city will give you some parochial vassal opinion and a temple will give both parochial and and zealot vassal.
also opinion and this can keep stacking. Another tip is I can use the gold to create titles and this way I can rapidly increase my legitimacy and my prestige. This is one of my perfect errors for the next generation and by 1034 I conquered the rest of the world and then I was also able to live to 100 years without issue. My heir also has another perfect heir lined up and he also has even less factions than before. So by using this strategy I can snowball into this large stable Roman Empire pretty consistently. If you made it this far thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative and entertaining. If you need help with your world conquest just comment below and I'll try to give some pointers. I know this video was a lot and there's a lot of info so thank you again. If you enjoyed my content so far please consider subscribing and liking this video. It helps me tremendously. You can check out my channel for other guys as well. Thanks from Bread God and have a good day.